Hi, I'm Tyann and I'm from St. Bernard School and I'm going to read Corduroy by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in a toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited for all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in a green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped by and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said, look, there's a very bear I really wanted. Not today, dear, my mother said. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I lost the button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving underneath him. Quickly by accident, he had stepped onto the escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped on the escalator as if he reached the next floor and there before his eyes was an amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and brown. Why, why here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up, but all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until it popped. Off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled, banging into the floor, the tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above when he had heard the crash and came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over the sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there was two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the covers. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and sat him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customer came into the store in the morning. And there looking at him with a wide, warm smile, the same little girl he had seen the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mom said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up the four flights of stairs into her family's apartment straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and alongside a girl's bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like the enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like the way you are, she said. You'll be more comfortable with your shoulder straps fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa. It gave him a big hug.